Well, looks like everything's working, except for the monitor resolution, as, as is the norm. Nice dual core. It's a quad core. Actually, no. I I think I'm I'm I think that AMD was totally in their right to call this an eight core CPU because, like, if this isn't an eight core, then like CPUs before floating point performance, like floating point, was even a thing, would have zero cores. Um, which is just like, yeah, no. Okay, so I've done a quick, like, baseline run. Um, apparently the vid is 1.35. Um... I have plenty of cooling headroom. It's worth noting this isn't a temperature reading. This works backwards. So it's like we're 45 degrees away from the CPU being too hot. Um, I'm not entirely certain why it's measured in Celsius because that doesn't make any sense. 25 pounds then? Uh, yeah, actually this was like 23 pounds. I just like rounded up the value so and converted it to USD because that's like... Uh, more, well, like, more approachable to the YouTube audience, in my opinion. Is DDR3 tuned? No, we're, we're at stock. Well, this is literally the start of the stream. Bargain, yeah. Well, it was listed as four, four parts not working. Um, as it turns out, the only thing that's not working is two of the CPU fan headers. Uh, which, uh, the seller said, like, oh, the CPU headers aren't working. And I was like, so, like, the power delivery died? So I was kind of hoping to, like, have to repair the VRM or something. But as it turns out, like, yeah, it's just, like, CPU fan headers don't work, which is, like, who we, like, and? <laughs> How is that a problem? Anyway, um, so, yeah, and it came with a kit of memory. Um, the CMOS battery was completely dead, so that got replaced. But other than that, like, yeah, it works. Um, so... Our initial score is just 5.56 points. Uh, and... Oh, I guess I should show... So here's the, here's the like, issue with FX chips, is, like... The room is at, like, what, like, at 20 degrees or something. And this is because these chips don't actually have a, like... They don't measure temperature. They have, like, the thermal margin system. Um... Yeah, there's, there's simply no way in hell that the CPU is at 26 degrees. Even under, like, 100% low. Like, there's no way. Um, so, yeah. So, temperature readings on, on these CPUs are fun. Um, Phenom 2s are actually kind of the same way. I'm not sure that we're going to do any memory tuning, because, like... Well, we'll see. Um, I'm mostly interested in like max CPU frequency and Cinebench. And, and Cinebench doesn't really care about RAM. I, actually, on FX chips, it cares like a little bit more than on, say, modern CPUs, but. Yeah, it really doesn't care about RAM very much. And also, this is. Uh, Version 2.12, I think, kind of sucks. <laughs> there is a lot of DDR3 memory chips, so it's kind of hard to to know, like... So off the top of my head, I don't know, like, 
how good every single DDR3 memory chip ever was. Um, but uh, I'm pretty sure this one kind of sucks. Um, so anyway, we're gonna go in the BIOS and uh, 4.5. What? 4.5 is for casuals. We're on a 240 millimeter AIO. At a minimum, we're doing 4.8. Um, and if, if it tops out at 4.8, that's a garbage CPU. If it's good, I would hope to see, like, a 5. If it's really good, 5 and, like, 5.1 or higher. Um, wait, what? The fuck is this? Oh, the memory... Wait, what? Asus, what are you doing? Um... Man, freaking Asus boards. So we weren't actually running a baseline. Okay, we're... I guess when you set it to manual, it automatically, like, sets a bunch of stuff? Weird. Anyway, we do need to disable these two, because otherwise the board is going to moan about these two being broken. Um... MSI B650S Wi-Fi DDR5? I know nothing about it. Um, I imagine for a 7800X 3D, it's perfectly fine. And even for, well, well, actually, I don't know. I'll have to look it up if it, whether or not it's fine for a 7950X, but for a 7800X 3D, the motherboard almost doesn't matter. And I don't see any reason why this wouldn't be able to handle a 7950X. I like the heat sinks, because they look like actual heat sinks. Well, okay, so now we're actually at stock, because apparently I accidentally turned on some, like, automatic Asus overclocking. Yeah, now, now it's like, now we're getting, like, boost and stuff going. Um, let's open overdrive. No, that's the wrong version of Cinebench. It's not relevant like r20 is not relevant on cpu on potato cpus like this one um also i think it would take a month <laughs> to finish um i do want to see what's going on with everything Okay, I'm starting to think the vid reading is not very accurate because it's still at 1.35, but the temp like the power draw seems to be lower than last time. Also, oh, it is running slower. Oh, actually, it's probably just the frequency then doing it. God, you have two gigabit BCSE BCBG. Hope you don't like voltage scaling. It's what it came with. It's weird. Like I have a lot of version 2.12. Is that Windows 7? Uh, yeah. I just put, grabbed, like, my, uh, FX OS. Um, or, well, it's not even my FX OS. It's, like, my AM3, AM3 Plus OS. Because, like, I tried booting it with window with some random Windows 10 install, and it didn't want to, and I'm like, uh, and it's probably because it's, like, not, like, that Windows install isn't legacy. Um, so, instead of, like, figuring out which, which SSD has a legacy Windows 10 on it, I was like, I'll just grab the Windows 7 install, because, like, it also has all the AM3 utilities on it that I need. Well, it doesn't have Turbo V Core, but I don't think that's too much of a loss. Oh, so the auto overclock from, from Asus is, like, a nice little 10%. Um, anyway, but yeah, you'll notice that, like, there's, like, an 83 gigahertz validation on here and a 7.9 gigahertz validation because <laughs> this is the os that i use for like uh phenom 2s and am3 plus and like fx chips for validations so yeah there's like a whole bunch of really high frequency validations lying around on the desktop uh we're not gonna save that we're gonna go into the bios and i guess we'll start at 1.35 volts um 
PCH core voltage 1.2 safe. Why would you be raising the chipset voltage? Are your like SATA ports dropping out or something? But I would, I mean, stock voltage for the chipset is like 1.05, so I'd imagine 1.2 is fine too. Okay, so let's do manual, CPU ratio, I don't know, let's start with 4 gigahertz. Turbo core, disab wait, disabled, wait, do we not have a, oh right, because these are 200, I'm, I'm, I'm dumb, okay, this is really slow, 20. Um, wait, you have a separate PCIe clock, ooh, that's neat. Why does it go from 100 to 150? I don't think I've ever seen that. I usually use gigabyte motherboards on AM3 and I... Eh. It's not like we're gonna be benching the GPU today, so we're not gonna worry about that. Um, I'm assuming the memory timings are already set correctly, right? Yeah, they're already set correctly. Um, Do I want to disable that? Eh, uh, we'll leave that on auto for now. Because I don't know off the top of my head what that is. Um... We're gonna go to 1.4 initially. 1.25... Wait, when does this go red? Really? Okay, good to know. Not gonna worry about anything else. Yeah, I don't see anything else worth worrying about. This diet, eh, we're gonna start with medium, I think. How does that go? Oh, it actually goes quite high. And then again, without, like, depending on the VRM, though, this is a really old VRM design, so it might actually benefit from that. And we'll worry about it later. I'll leave it at 300 kilohertz for now. Because um, that's, like, the really funny thing on a lot of modern motherboards. Some of them still offer a VRM switching frequency setting, and uh, basically it does nothing. Like, on a lot of modern motherboards, you can go all the way up to, like, 1 megahertz switching frequency, and it does absolutely nothing. On some motherboards, it actually causes issues rather than helping anything. Um, so, yeah, and funnily enough, I think on, like, Gigabyte Z390 boards, you got the best voltage regulation at, like, 300 kilohertz, or maybe slightly below that if you uh, used an external tool to, like, get direct control over the VRM. Um... Anyway, I think this... I think the Northbridge starts at like 2000, doesn't it? I don't care about the HT. Oh, we should disable that and disable this. Yeah. Eh. 
Can you maybe disable this SATA controller? Because I'm not sure if that's what the SSD is plugged into. Probably not. Well, we'll see. Do I I'll bother over... I would not build a NAS out of this, because the idle power draw is insane. Like, this, this is a terrible... Like, the... Like, if you're... Like, even amongst the, like, terrible 32 nanometer AMD CPUs... The, like, the APUs are significantly lower idle power consumption because they don't have a north bridge. This thing is terrible for idle. Um, I would not, like, unless you, unless, yeah, like, I would not build a, anything around this. Um. <laughs> unless your electricity is, like, really cheap. Um. And you don't care if you have, like, a NAS that pulls, like, 80 watts at idle, like, sitting there. Um. Yeah, I saw... Oh, I forgot to send you the email. Like, I, won I forgot to send you the confirmation email for the 780Ti. It did not crash. <laughs> as well as, as chips. Yeah, like, you can get all kinds of, like, other old, cheap CPUs that... Like... These are inefficient. Like, AM3 is inefficient even, like, li compared to everything, basically. Because, like, that nor the North Bridge is really bad for power efficiency. Oh, well, that was a nice, uh, like, 20% uplift in performance. <laughs> Oh man, the good old days when CPU overclocking actually did something instead of just making your... Well, actually, on Intel CPUs, it literally doesn't do anything. The funny thing is, I'm pretty... Well... I'm pretty sure on modern CPUs, like, one or two cores delivers a similar s per score in C Bench 11.5 as, like, this entire CPU does. <laughs> Which is hilarious. X99 NAS. I'd say X99 probably isn't the most efficient option, but I can't imagine it's worse than AM3. Yeah, but, like... The in the the thing is, yeah, but FX is even worse. Like the North Bridge is like very thirsty um, compared to the IO die that we have now. Actually, the CPU cores themselves are quite good uh, at like having a really deep idle on FX chips, but the platform as a whole is just like that. That North Bridge is is bad <laughs> for your idle power draw. Okay, so that's 4 gigahertz done. Actually, couldn't I just use over... Wait, no, we can just use PS check. Oh, I love having internal tools for everything. Because they're just better than... Uh, well, I guess I... Actually, Turbo V Core would probably be more convenient, but... Uh. Though, I've kind of forgotten how to use this, so... Where was it? Ah, yeah. CPU settings. All. Boost. No. Um. So now we have the CPU. Where's CPU Z? Man, I really wish I had figured, like, yeah, I'm, I'm really kind of starting to wish that I'd figured out how to get um, the capture card. Well, 
Yeah, the capture card to cooperate with this. Okay, so we've got CPU-Z. Oh, um, because, yeah, I can't see anything. Um, there's, there's not enough pixels. Uh, okay, so this... Alright. Oh, man, I kind of don't like how that, to like, this is permanently on top. Okay, that's P0. Okay, so we're going to disable the two boost states, because I don't care about those. Um, and then we have P0, and that's at... Uh, that's vid. Oh, right, here's our frequency setting. Okay, that's down. We want up. Uh, so we want, like, save, and now if I put it to... Yeah, we got 4.1. Okay. Um, is there a button to make all of them shift up at the same time? Eh, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's try 4.1. P states, uh, they're, the P stands for power states, and it's just, like, the name for, like, the different frequency, frequency voltage settings that the CPU has. wrong with FX CPUs back then? They were really slow and really power hungry. Like, the FX8120 is literally clock for clock and core for core slower than a Phenom 2 6 core. Um, like, if you had a Phenom 2 1090T or an 1100 at like 4, 4 to 4.2 gigahertz, it was basically just better than the FX chips that came out by, like, a lot. And Sandy Bridge wiped the floor with any FX CPU. Like, just look at, looking here in Cinebench, right? This right here, this is a Core i7, like, 950. No, 960. Yeah, so, like, a four-core uh, X58 CPU, which is older than the FX chips by quite a bit. Um is like the same performance as the, like, like it's it's close to an FX8120. So the single core performance on these is absolutely atrocious. Um, which basically means uh, for gaming, these suck, like massively suck. For, well, basically everything they kind of suck. Like the only thing they're really good for is if you need a lot of integer compute and you don't want to pay for it. <laughs> and like, you don't care about electricity. Because they are actually, like, if you just need a lot of integer performance, these these are quite good at that. Because um, I think the idea on AMD's side was that these were primarily meant to be like a file server CPU. So lots of really cheap cores, and they kind of work for that. But for anything else, they're kind of terrible. Um... Anyway, let's try more gigahertz. Uh, oh, and then we need to right shift shift the P states down. Oh no, man! Why is this? So clunk. Okay, now we're at four point two. Overclocked Core 2 quads close to FX8 cores in performance? Maybe. I don't know anything about Core 2 quad.
that's that could absolutely it's not that's not entirely true there, there was a few select very specific workloads that these were actually kind of decent at and then but like the majority of workloads these sucked at and at the time i think amd was like oh all the floating point compute is just going to move to gpus and it's like uh no <laughs> Like, you might remember the, like, APUs getting marketed with this, like, whole fusion thing where it's like, oh, you're going to have, like, garbage CPU cores um, to do CPU things and then, like, an iGPU that handles all the floating point stuff. Um, that never really went anywhere as far as I know. Um, so, yeah, but at the time, like, the only thing AMD really had going for them was that the GPU division wasn't a complete, like was well like the igpu was at least significantly faster than intel's so let's try I got seven. No, these got to eight gigahertz. I, I. Yeah, these go all the way to eight gigahertz if you're on liquid nitrogen. And then for a very, very long time, nothing else did. Um, yeah, like the next architecture of CPUs to actually get to eight gigahertz is like uh, Raptor Lake. Hey, we're 25% faster than stock. Or, well, almost 25%. No, not 25. More than that. We're like 40% faster than stock at this point. And, and still really slow. <laughs> um... Uh, that's like the, the 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 sad thing with the FX chips is like, yeah, they have so much overclocking headroom. And, and it's just like, yeah, but even after all that overclocking, they were still really, really slow. <laughs> um, okay, let's try 4.4. Oh, false advertising. I don't rem remember there being, like, false advertising. Um, is it, like, crashing? Oh, 4.4 won't run. Okay, this is probably a bit of a potato CPU. Um, yep, it just crashed. Oh, false advertising on cores? No, I like I still consider this an eight core. I I don't care if it got ruled that it isn't an eight core because by that lot, like w within that lot, like what even is a core? Do CPUs? It, if this is not an eight core, then does that mean that CPUs that didn't have floating point units built into them had zero cores? What? Why? Why is it at 1.4? Didn't I set it to one? Oh no, I did set it to 1.4, not 1.35. Okay, it is probably very potato. <laughs> we'll just skip straight to 1.5. No, no point. No point dragging this out. Single front end that can only feed one core at a time. Yeah, but every CPU only has one memory controller.
Yeah, that's one of the biggest issues with uh, AM3 Plus is that the motherboard's really... Because here's the thing, if you're a motherboard manufacturer, right, and AMD puts out these garbage tier CPUs that, like, the performance is terrible. Um, and admittedly, at the time, they were at least kind of cheap for the performance they delivered. Like, in some ways, they'd be more cost... Like, for certain things, they'd be somewhat more cost-effective than Intel CPUs. Um, but the issue is, like, yeah, but you can't... You can't make a like a two a motherboard with a 200 watt power delivery system is significantly like more expensive than a motherboard with like a 100 watt power delivery system, right? Um, so most of the AM3 Plus motherboards are trash because you have these like you need to keep the cost down in order to like justify the overall platform. Um, and yeah, and that's just not, that's kind of no good. Um, I'm just going to remove everything except like P0. Does that work? Is that going to make things, yeah, that's going to make things a lot simpler. So now we're going to drop everything. What? Why is it being stupid? Okay. Um... And we're going to go to 4.5, save, and I, I do actually want to run overdrive again so that we can see the temperatures. This calls three. Well, I played games on FX. Um, but like I remember playing t try playing Terra on an FX sixty three hundred at like four point eight gigahertz, and it was an absolute slideshow. Actually, slideshow is being generous. <laughs> in the big PvP battlegrounds, it literally wouldn't be reliably load character models in. Um, and it ran at like three FPS. Actually, even less than that sometimes. Like, it was really bad. <laughs> How FX would do in BMNG. Really badly, probably. But I also played, like, uh, Payday 2 on it, and Payday 2 was fine. Um... Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to clock the CPU back up again, apparently. Oh yeah, I did. Um, I played Robocraft on it, I played Need for Speed World on it, I played Planetside on it. Planetside, funnily enough, Planetside ran better than Terra did. Um, Planetside, like, that would be getting, like, 30 FPS, uh, in the big fights. Um, but yeah, Terra, Terra was so bad on the, the FX 6300. <laughs> like, oh boy. That game really hated that CPU. I don't make a video with a 2600K. I don't think I have a 2600K. Never really been in like, like. I yeah, I have like I f I have 2500Ks, 3570Ks, but I don't have a 2600. Because the thing is, the a lot of the Intel i7s like r tend to cost way too much for how old they are. So I wasn't really interested in like spending the money on one. Um, we're gonna go up to, you know what, uh, we're gonna just skip straight to 4.7. Um, because at 1.5 volts I think there's a pretty good chance that'll just work. And let's watch them temperatures. Yeah, we still have plenty of thermal margin.
Is it normal for a ram tune to take three months? Depending on how hard you're pushing it, yes. Oh my, did it seriously, it crashed? Okay, this chip is an absolute potato. Some real trash tier silicon here. Because we'll bump up the LLC. I don't know what the, like, how aggressive the load line on this board is. Or the VRM thermals, where there's a fan sitting over the Northbridge heatsink, and the Northbridge heatsink is part of the VRM heatsink on this board, so very good. Also, it's a crosshair. Oh man, even at idle we're losing like 30 millivolts. And I'm not even sure that's a die sense reading, so it might be worse than that. Oh boy, FX chips, man. Um, okay, well, going from medium to high should actually quite significantly reduce the V-droop, so... Um, yeah, and I'm just gonna boot with the core ratio set to 4.7 already. If it, if it gets through the Windows loading screen, that's a good sign. Because the Windows 7 loading screen is, like, multi-threaded. You'll see the power consumption, like, jump up pretty high when, when we get to it. You had like 30 degrees of thermal margin. It's a fun thing with the FX CPUs is they don't actually like measure temperature, they measure thermal margin. Which is a completely arbitrary like thermal scale. And as far as I know, it even accounts for like voltage and stuff. Um, do you recommend bulldozer chips for what? Heating your house in winter? Sure. <laughs> Actually using them for anything? Uh, no. <laughs> What's the oldest CPU you've overclocked? Um, probably a Phenom 2720 Black Edition, which was very unpleasant. Those things, the memory controller on those on liquid nitrogen, like, does not work. <laughs> Like, the memory controller below, like, minus 120 or something just, like, gives up. And it's, it's, it sucks. <laughs> like, you can't even run, like, DDR3 1600. Which on Phenom 2s is already a challenge in, at the best of times, but on Liquid Nitrogen, it's like, man, I was, I think I was running, like, DDR3 1000 or something to get the CPU to function. Horrible CPUs. Absolutely horrible. Because I wanted to get, like, triple core Cinebench scores, and it's just like, yeah, actually, uh, the 720 Black Edition is not the CPU to do that with. You need to get, like, a 555, you need to get, like, a 550, 555, or a 560 that is lucky enough to unlock a third core, and hopefully that third core isn't trash. Because buying the, the, the 720 Black Editions are freaking terrible. Absolutely horrendous CPU. <laughs> Eh, we still have plenty of thermal margin. Oh man, 300 watts already. <laughs> this is like F this is like 7950x levels of power draw at like one tenth of the performance. Okay, I don't think it might. It's, it's probably not one tenth. Is it? I've never actually run Cinebench 11 on a on a 7950x, so I don't know what a 7950X gets in Cinebench 11. I wonder, we, we might be able to find somebody on Hardware Bot who's done that. It might be a 10. Oh no, I was right, it's like a 10. <laughs> oh boy, man, these CPUs look. Okay, well, this is at 6 gigahertz, so that's not really fair to our poor FX chip, but, like, 88 points. Oh, boy. Okay, let's find something that's at, like, see frequencies this potato could actually achieve. Um, 
Okay, well, it won't achieve 5.5, but yeah, it's like it's like a tenth of the speed of a 7950X at, like, the power draw of a 7950X. That is... Oh, well, yeah, FX chips, man. <laughs> Does tuning sub-timings on DDR3 make much of a difference? Uh... Probably, though I didn't really do a lot. Like, I, I'm not a very good DDR3 overclocker. Yeah, so we're looking at like a tenth of the performance at the same power consumption with this chip. Uh. <laughs> hey, it ran this time. Okay, let's try 4.8. No, not that. Okay, so now we're at 4.8. Hopefully it still runs. I'm on a 240mm AIO. And FX chips, they're not very hard to cool. They're just really, really power hungry. They're basically like, like they're, like the closest comparison from a, like a modern CPU perspective would be like, well, no, because the 14900K does run really hot. Um, the 14900K also pulls more power than this, so. Um. This is not really a good equivalent, because the thermal density on these is actually really low. So they don't run... Like, they're not hard to cool. They are very power-hungry, though. 11900K? Yeah, I guess that would be kinda similar. Can I use it on a T topology board at 3733? I don't know. I kind of doubt it. Also, this chip really sucks. Like, this is a real potato piece of silicon. One point five two five, probably. I think I'm just gonna go straight to fi one point five five. Like we have the thermal margin, so I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Oh man, I forgot that the BIOS goes that far. Eighty three twenty would be better, not necessarily. I had an 8320E, which was basically as bad as this. There's, like, a lot of silicon quality variants on FX chips. As, as in, in the range of how good or how bad you can get them, there's, it's, like, huge. Like, there's amazing chips that'll do, like, 5.3, 5.4. I think even, like, I think 5.4 is about the limit of what you can do on a water cooling system. Um... And then you have garbage CPUs that, like, hard wall at, like, 4.9. Um, actually, that's not that much range. On LN2, it gets worse, though. Actually, on LN2, the spread between various cores on one FX chip can be 500 megahertz. Like, I have an FX9590 where, like... There's like one module on the entire chip that does 8.34, and all the other modules are like eight or less. 
That's that's where this validation, yeah, this validation file comes from. Eight eight point three four three gigahertz, um, and that's one core in one module that does that. Every Thing else on that chip I think the next best module is like has a core that does like 8.2 or something and then the rest of the chip does like wall like stops at like 7 8 or actually I think the worst one is like 7 7 or something and one of them's like 7 9 um, so on one chip like the difference between the best part and the worst part of the chip is like 500 megahertz um, which means if you're overclocking the entire thing at the same time, it actually clocks kind of terrible. But if you only clock the best part of it, it goes really, really high. Um, it also, like, that chip also pulls enough power at, like, 7 gigahertz with four cores turned on that it'll shut down the VRM on gigabyte motherboards trying to get into Windows. Like, the loading screen for Windows 7 pulls enough power to get the VRM on the motherboard that I use to shut down. Uh, which was, uh, very funny. <laughs> Trying to figure out, like, why can't I boot Windows at 7 gigahertz? And it's because the VRM was literally turning off. Actually, it might have been, like, 6.5 gigahertz or something. I don't think it was 7. 7 would have been really high for, for all core. Especially on that motherboard. Like, that motherboard can't run Cinebench at, like, 5.5 gigahertz all core. Um, with FX chips. Um... But it's really, really good at validations. Ma mainly because it had one core per module mode, which, like, uh, a lot of, like... This is one thing that really annoys me with AM3 Plus Asus boards, is the later models... So, like, the Crosshair V Formula Z, which is the refresh of the formula, uh, that doesn't have one core per module mode, which is really dumb. Because for validations, it's like... I, I think there's some workaround to not need it, but... Um, I, I'd rather have one core per module mode. Yeah, so like I said, this, this CPU actually seems to be garbage. What's your HTN Northbridge clock? Right now it's stock, just 2200. Yeah, we, like 4.8 at 1.55. Man, I thought my FX6350 was bad, but <laughs> this is worse. I don't know. Maybe maybe it thermally rolled over, so we're going to try it with slightly less voltage, but... If it thermally rolled over, that actually might be a good sign that the CPU just needs to... Like, it might benefit a lot from being really cold. If it... If it actually just crashed because the voltage isn't high enough, then this chip is really, really terrible. Yeah, we have plenty of thermal margin, so... Like, if it, if it doesn't work at 1.5... Like, if it does, if it crashes again, we're going to Though it might have thermally rolled over already, in which case this chip is crazy temperature sensitive. Because, like, the FX6350 I had, like, you could bench that even when the thermal margin went negative. As in, like, it was straight up overheating and it would still scale. Yeah, so this looks like it might actually... 
So, okay, now I, okay, now I really want to test, like, will it crash if I just raise the voltage again? It's Cinebench, they're not affecting anything. How long till Windows craps itself? Uh, not happening, it's Windows 7. Uh, seriously, I've never broken a Windows 7 install. Um, yeah, I guess we're just gonna test it again at like uh, 1.55. Like, the worst I ever did to a Windows 7 install is that I, like, had to manually fix something in, uh, like, but that was, like, GPU-related. I've never broken Windows 7 with just, like, unstable CPU. Or unstable memory, for that matter. Are you on SATA? Yeah, I'm on SATA. This doesn't, like, how would I even get an NVMe drive on here? Man, I miss Windows 7. Yeah, we still have thermal margins, so I don't know why it crashed that other time. I mean, it might crash again. Yeah, as far as I know, when you use the M.2, like, PCIe cards, you need to, like, the board needs to be compatible with, like, booting from PCIe and stuff. And on platforms this old, I think you need, like, a BIOS mod, potentially. Hmm, ran this time. Interesting. I didn't catch what the blue screen said last time, so I don't know, maybe it wasn't CPU. You use USB or PS2 ports? I use USB 2 ports. Or, well, on modern motherboards, obviously, I just use whatever USB ports are available. A lot of boards these days don't have USB 2 ports. And also, they wouldn't even be native USB 2 ports. But, like, on older boards, a lot of the, US, like, a lot of the USB 3 ports would not necessarily be native. So they would need drivers, and that's just like, okay, well... Eh, sure, let's go up another 25 millivolts. I want to see if, if it, like, crashes again. USB 3 on an older boards, yeah. Z790 board, Z97 boards, yeah, I think so. I think there's a couple of them that had M.2 slots. Man, I swear the freaking like, folder opening is faster on 7 than it is on 10. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, my daily system is not a fair comparison. This thing is like a... 
a bare bones test bench. Huh. Wait, what did that blue screen say? Well, we're gonna crash it again, because I need to know what that b salt said. Oh yeah, Gigabyte had a 990FX board with an M.2 slot. There's like a... There's like a version of the UD3 with an M.2 slot. There's so many versions of the UD3. The initial versions where the VRM likes to explode, the later versions where the VRM just turns off after they implement it over current protection. <laughs> What's crazy to me about the UD3 is that it uses a four-layer PCB. In fact, as far as I know, the only motherboards on AM3 Plus that are, like, eight layers are the crosshairs. Everything else is six or less. Um, which basically means everything else is, four, like, the vast majority of AM3 Plus boards are four-layer PCBs. Um, probably part of why the boards run so damn hot. Um, actually, maybe Asus has more six layers than, like, Sabretooth is probably a six, might be an eight. I don't know. Um, I do want to check overdrive this time. What is considered an unsafe MOBO temp? Uh, for what? The chipset? One, two, four error can be due to something with the RAM? Yeah, I guess it could be. I mean, it is a quad rank memory setup. I just need more north bridge voltage. And eh, still have thermal headroom. As far as I know, basically everything produced after, like, 2015 or something is terrible on LN2. What is that?
one or like The hell is VDDR? Like, I tried looking it up and it doesn't say anything. Should be memory controller. I'm I'm gonna have to like I've literally never seen that voltage before. Or at least if I've seen it before, I don't remember it. Okay, I've probably seen it before when I had a saber tooth. But like, I, I'm like 99% certain that gigabyte boards do not have this voltage. Anyway, let's see if I can get this to run 4.9. Have you ever used an ASRock 970M Pro 3? I have. The VRM gets extremely hot. Also, it was like a... It was generally not a good board, in my experience. There's CP... Yeah, well, I've already set the CPU Northridge voltage to 1.3. Now, I have a better idea for figuring out what that voltage is. I'm just gonna, like... I mean, I'm not gonna do it right now, but, like, later... I might put in, like, a lower power CPU... Or actually, I guess I could just underclock the CPU to like a gigahertz of at like low voltage, and then just put like a really small heatsink on it, and then poke around the board until I find which voltage regulator is outputting the voltage listed in the BIOS, and then try to figure out what like because I'm I almost feel like that might be a voltage regulator that like it doesn't necessarily even exist on other motherboards. Um. It's amazing how slowly the temperature increases on these chips. Like, you can see the temperature climb instead of the what you get on modern CPUs where it just goes BAM! 90 degrees! Instantly! Or if you have a lower voltage, it immediately jumps from whatever your idle temp is to like 60 or 70, just immediately because of the thermal density. And here it's like, no, no, it's 20, and then 14, and then 10. You know, I think we're just going to pull some of the memory sticks. I, I wasn't planning to overclock quad rank DDR3 anyway. I, I just left it in because that's what the the board came with when when it came in like, when I bought it off eBay. Like it came with all four memory sticks installed. Yeah. There is absolutely no reason to be running this much memory on this board. I 
I day lead an FX6350 uh, at like 4.9 on an air cooler. It could also be some kind of wacky conflict with, like, Easy Tune being on this OS. Though, Gigabyte software, in my experience, just, like, if it's if it doesn't detect the motherboard, it usually is fine. Whereas, like, Asus Turbo, uh, Turbo V Core, or actually, it's not Turbo V Core, but, like, Asus Turbo V is the one where, like, yeah, you install that on an OS, and if you try to use it with anything other than an Asus motherboard, it gets very upset. Like, you'll get a blue screen right as Windows tries to initialize. Ryzen Master actually does the same thing for Windows 10. I think. Or it used to do that. So, there was some AMD overclocking utility where it's like, yeah, you put it on an OS and then you can't use that OS on, like, Intel systems. No, nope. clock interrupt not received. Okay, that is a core crash. Maximum RAM speed for a 3100. Depends on your motherboard and memory kit and skills. Is there a way to bump it higher? I mean, you can try, like... It... If you, if you know what you're doing, you uh, depending on the CPU and if you know what you're doing and the motherboard you're using, you might be able to run 3800. Yeah, so this chip doesn't really seem very good. Well, may, maybe, maybe it has like one lucky core on it. That would be nice. The RM heatsink is, is not even warm. I mean, there is a fan sitting over the north bridge, which is like part like, like, it's like the VRM has a fan sitting over it. So yeah, it makes sense. Plus we're only doing like short bursts of sit load. So not surprising. Right now we're at 1.6, but the LLC is only at high. So like I haven't, like the LLC isn't super insanely high or anything. I don't really want to just, like, max it out when I don't have an oscilloscope hooked up to the board, because... I mean, you can just kind of, like, trial and error your way through the load line calibration settings, but it's like, man, it's fine. It's, I'm gonna, like, I have an oscilloscope, I may as well, like, if I'm gonna do that, I may as well measure it. Instead of just trying to, like, feel if the stability is better or not. Interesting that he keeps throwing like random uncorrectable errors. I still think it's just the core crashing. Cause like I pulled two memory sticks and that doesn't seem to have made any difference. Yeah, but it didn't throw up the clock interrupt not received. It's temp sensitive. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's an FX chip. <laughs> if they weren't temperature sensitive, they wouldn't scale so much with liquid nitrogen. Try higher load line calibration. That's literally the same as just raising the voltage. And I'm not concerned about, like, 
like breaking an FX chip with anything less than like 1.7 volts. Actually, even 1.7 volts, I'm not exactly concerned. <laughs> it'll be completely uncoolable at that point, but I don't think it'll degrade the CPU very quickly because I had a FM2 APU, which is the same manufacturing process, same core architecture as this, and like I was benching it like like 1.75 was fine. And since it was just a quad core with no L3 cache, it was actually coolable at that voltage. Um, yeah, but with the FX chips, once your voltage is this high, the, the temperatures start being a major problem. Well, actually, it's still not running that hot. Oh, yeah, no, we're crashing. One of the cores just died. Yeah, clock interrupt not received. So that's just another core crash. I think it's all been just core crashes, and, and it, like, because of how it's crashing, like, it doesn't even, like, spit out the, the same VSOD reliably. Like, the 32 nanometer, as far as I'm concerned, the 32 nanometer AMD CPUs for vCore are borderline indestructible. Though that's not entirely true, I have actually managed to kill one. Uh, when I accidentally booted a CPU at 2.1 volts at minus 20 degrees Celsius. 2.1 volts at like minus 180? Fine. At minus 20? Not fine. Very not fine. <laughs> CPU was like literal insta-dead. Um... Actually, it might have been 2.2. Like, it was, it was 2 volt. It was definitely over 2 volts. Um, put one bad core at 4.9. Nah, I want to I wanna do all core 4.9. We can try, like, per core later. Why would you put it in a virtual machine? You wanted to make it even slower? BIOS even allows over 2 volts. Uh, that motherboard didn't, so I had a hard mod. The board only went up to 1.8 volts, and I had a hard mod to get it above uh, 1.8. Speaking of which, I need to fix that motherboard, because that hard mod wasn't very well uh, secured, and it, like, ripped up a bunch of components and traces, and yeah. I mean, yeah, like, I need to fix that. Basically, like, the, the voltage sensing circuitry on that board is a bit uh, broken. Tips for Hynix DDR5 AM5 settings post BIOS update. The timings you can use exactly the same ones as the old video. Um, the main difference with the newer BIOSes is like the FCLK thing is like at 6000 you either want to run FCLK at like 2000 or like 2200 or 2160 potentially. And uh, other than that it's like you can run higher clocks on the newest BIOSes. How much Geekbench 3 memory score is? Uh bad <laughs> I want to say it's like 3,000 points or something if even I don't think it'll run Geekbench 3 at the settings we're at right now we still haven't hit 400 watts oh we're almost there you can see the power draw creeping up as everything goes up in temperature VRM heatsink doing? Oh, it's like warm. Not sure I'd want to actually touch the PCB though right now. Will it actually run this time? This needs like over 1.6. <laughs> I think Geekbench 3 might actually be heavier than Cinebench on an FX in terms of stability. LLC is high. Eight points! Yay! We're like... In like, I think a 2600k gets that. Let me, let me just look it up. Oh, man. I mean, this is admittedly a 6 gigahertz 2600K, which is ridiculous, but... Yeah, 
Yeah, see, this is this is why nobody likes the FX CPUs, because the 2600K is is significantly faster. Even in Cinebench. Yeah. Okay, let's see if Geekbench 3 just crashes. Um, because I think it will. Yeah, so the 9000 series CPUs, as far as I know, are generally very high leakage. So they absolutely chug power. Um, basically, leakage is, um, with silicon, it's like how much current just kind of goes places it shouldn't. So, like, you'll have, like, you can take two CPUs, run them at the same frequency, exact same voltage, and one of them is going to pull a different, like, one of them is going to pull a different amount of power than the other one, even if you keep them at the same temperature. Uh, and funnily enough, it has very little relation to actual, like, uh, or, no, little relation, but it's loosely connected to what kind of frequencies a chip will do. Because I've seen, like, I've seen chips where it's, like, they're very low leakage and clock like garbage, and very high leakage and clock like garbage, very, uh, low leakage and clock really well, and then also very high leakage and clock really well. So there's, like, you can get every combination. So it's just like another, like it's another factor of silicon quality, but it doesn't really mean much. Hey, I was, I was pretty spot on. I was like, yeah, like 3K and it's 2756. I'm pretty sure that's something I just like vaguely remember because Geekbench 3 is on this OS. So I probably benched Geekbench 3 on this, which means like I pro like I, Actually, I wonder if there's like a random screenshot of Geekbench 3 on here. Well, that's not Geekbench 3, is it? Oh, here we have Geekbench 3. Yeah, like 30... Wait. No, that's 2448. Oh, that was the potato. Yeah, the triple core potato. Oh, man, this was so bad. <laughs> oh, this is such a pain. Wait, is this the 555? I think this might be the 555. I don't think that's the 720. Yeah. I don't know why it's Gurk instead of Geek. I guess I probably just like hit the E and the K at the same time. Um, okay, I think this is a 555, not a 720. Actually, no, because the frequency on this is, like, trash. Unless this is, like, ambient. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Um, some kind of triple core. Anyway, um, so that's 4.9 gigahertz at just, like, stupid volts. Um, I guess we could try Clock the North Bridge up next. Oh, forgot to hit the delete key. Oh wait, at least we get the, the SATA of controller freaking out, so plenty of time to hit delete later.
He kind of suspects that bumping the NB clock like that is going to destabilize the CPU again, so we're going to drop it to 24. We'll lower the core voltage down to 1.6, and we're just going to bump... Uh, Okay, so like that, I think we'll be okay. Is this the origin? No, it's the original formula. I'd put the Z in the name if it was the Z. Does anybody remember what the previous score was? Or am I actually? I guess I could just go back in the video feed. 1.4 NB safe? Uh, probably? Yeah, I think the... There's like a PDF from AMD for like safe voltages for this. AMD FX tuning guide. Oh, and they deleted the... the link doesn't work anymore. Well, that's freaking stupid. Oh, there's still a copy of it on some, like, random PDF storage website. 7.95. Is that better than before? I don't remember. Oh, yeah, it's... I, it's a... Wait, no, we're, we're at the Opteron. Um... No, it's not a PDF download, it's just like a archive. I, I'm pro I probably have a copy of this PDF lying around on my, my hard drive somewhere, just because I like store data sheets like this. Well, this isn't really a data sheet, but anyway, so back in the day, AMD actually made useful tuning guides. Though, I guess there's no point making a tuning guide for Ryzen 7000 when it like doesn't, you know, overclock very much. But... Can I, like, uh, wait, how does this work? Two? Oh. Oh, this website actually stupid. Okay, I'm gonna go fi find a better copy then. Yeah, because it used to be... Wait, did I find it? No. Yeah, because it used to be on AMD's own website, I think, and they just got rid of it. Which is lame. Huh, I can't find it. I should definitely have a copy, but I don't know where it went. Well...
Is it OS? Yeah, this is Win 7. Man, the A A120 is, like, really unpopular on hardware bot. Or the rankings are both broken. Oops. Wait. Yeah, my 7.95 is, like, top, top, tw like, 20, because <laughs> there's, like, no scores. Also, whoa, these suck. I think. Oh, actually, that's not that much worse than the FX8. Wait, there's just not many... Did people hate the FX8 150 also? I'm pretty sure 11 was the benchmark at the time, right? Um... This doesn't seem right. Like, I know these things were slow and, like, terrible, but, like... People benched them, right? Okay, so W Prime has, like, a decent number of submissions. And that's on the 8150. Yeah. Right, no, that's super high. The thing is, I don't. Well, actually, I probably have W Prime installed. Hey, that Northbridge overclock quite significantly boosted the memory performance. So... Do I have W Prime? Oh, I do have W Prime. Um, event settings... 8. Oh man, that's so weird. <laughs> so used to modern CPUs where it's like 16, 32... Seven seconds. Is that any good? No. Not really. <laughs> Thing is, as far as I know, W Prime is almost like pure frequency. Um, let me just check. What's what's the W Prime record? I mean, this is at seven gigahertz. Eh, they did mess with the memory timing, so maybe maybe it cares a little. I mean, top 20... Okay, that's not ha Wait, what? The thing is, this is one of those really old benchmarks, so, like, it could be just, like, OS things doing it. Okay, so here we have extremely mediocre memory settings. At, like, 5.5. Versus... Kinda... 
actually really good. Huh, so it might scale with memory. Well, wait, what? This is a 5.1 on dry, on liquid nitrogen? What? Did their thermal paste fail? Is this from some kind of competition? Oh, heating CPU pot will you find? I guess some kind of pre-testing then. BDC conditioner? Uh, no, I think that's just Super Pi. Actually, wait, shouldn't I be able to raise the FSB from overdrive? Clock voltage. Well, this UI is really not friendly to my... Uh, wait. Wait, HT rep, what? No, wait, what does this do? Okay, I can't remember how to use this. Screw it. <laughs> We're going in back into the BIOS. I have a literal box of DDR3 behind me. So if I want better DDR3, it's literally just a matter of, like, switch, like, finding it, really. <laughs> um, I think my entire DDR3 collection is sitting behind me. Yeah. Um. Now, right now, like, I want to, I want to try, me like, overclock the memory sticks that this actually came with, so, um, that's what we're gonna do. Oh, we're at, like, potato timings right now. Anyway, we're gonna start with, like, 11, 11, 11... Sure, 30. Um... Okay, that's refresh cycle... Oh, refresh rate. Oh. Okay, well, we don't get to change that. We're gonna stay on 2T for now. Wait, MS? Oh, right, because microseconds would... Because they don't have the, like, there's, like, the fancy U character that you use for micro, and obviously you're not putting that in a BIOS, I guess. Or, like, getting it into a BIOS would be really awkward or something, so it's not there. Um... I do actually have a postcode, because I have, like, a postcode card. Um, just a PCI postcode card. Um, so yeah, let's see if, like, 1884 works. But these are Elpida memory sticks. I, I expect this to, like, not work, but we'll see, I guess. Man, DDR3 is so much nicer to shoot. <laughs> it boots so fast. On DDR5, actually, even DDR4 compared to this takes forever. <laughs> okay, let's see if 2133 works. And then go to 12s on everything. And that does not work. Though, funnily enough, there are some DDR3 memory chips that, like, don't work if you set the timings too loose. So we need to check that. Because <laughs> it might be literally it won't post at 12 no matter what frequency it's at. 
for our cast latency, I think, is the main one that runs into that. Though I think there's some memory chips where it's like TRCD, where if you set TRCD too loose, they won't post, but I think usually it's just cast latency. All right, this is an Asus motherboard, so it doesn't recover. Does this perhaps have a MemoK bus? Actually, I think a MemoK just resets the BIOS anyway, for the most part, so... Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to clear CMOS. See, this is, this is one advantage to the Gigabyte boards on AM3, is that if you punch in settings that don't work, they kick you back into the BIOS with an error message almost instantly. Whereas the Asus boards, you punch in settings that don't work, and you could literally, like, the board will literally just get not post. Ever. <laughs> you can leave it sitting for, like, a day, and it'll still be stuck. Sometimes just resets your mem. Yeah, except in my experience, it usually resets everything. Except, like, maybe something in the advanced menu or something. I'm pretty sure 11's a 21... No, that's 1600 for that, isn't it, Jedi? Now, we'll try 11's across the board. I guess I should save a profile at this point, because I feel like we're going to be hitting a lot of clear CMOS on this. Um, now we're just going to call it ASDF. If there's only one profile, it's not a mystery as to what's on it. Well, it's not booting, but it's stuck on a different postcode this time. <laughs> oh, that might have safe booted in. Oh, yeah, looks like we're going back in the BIOS again. Asus. Dude, what is this BIOS version? Is this some, like, ancient, like...
Is this supposed to be lit up? Does anybody know? Oh. Apparently. Yeah, that's like a toggle button. Good to know. That's probably why that random profile was loaded up. This is a launch BIOS? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either. <laughs> Back in the DDR3 days, it wasn't really much of a thing to update the BIOS. It's just not a thing you did. Poor unlock stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know. It also has like, uh, it should have. Wait, what? We don't have one core per module mode? Wait, does Aces just straight up not have one core per module at all? That's lame as hell. Azrock has it, Gigabyte has it, MSI I don't know, but... Anyway, I forgot to disable this, and... Bam. I'm actually going to save a... I thought that was like the one of the big differences between the Formula and the Formula Z is that on the Formula you still had the one core per module. And then the Z removed that. Because that's like super handy for doing validations. Okay, I think these sticks won't run 2133 at all. You need BIOS 9920. Oh. Where can one get BIOS 9920?
Even cheap. Yeah, like, well, literally, like I said, Azrock and Gigabyte both have one core per module, and then Asus is just like, nah. <laughs> Okay, so that's 4,800 with 1,866. Try 1,900 on the mem. Okay, let's try over 1,900, because I want, like, 4.8 gigahertz-ish on the CPU. This should work. I think the NB clock is getting a bit high. That still works. Try run Geekbench with this. Oh, I forgot to ignore the two fans. How can these FX chips go? I've had them all the way up to like 2550, 2600. And if you're on liquid nitrogen, they'll go over 3000 quite easily, assuming you have the correct memory chips. So like Hynix or Samsung G Die. Especially G Die. Like G Die, if you're on liquid nitrogen, it basically goes to 3400 on its own. And we have a crash on Windows, okay. Depending on what CPU you have, uh, you won't have display output if you don't have a GPU. And if I remember correctly, the main limiting factor to the memory clock on FX chips is the Northbridge clock itself, and you're not doing 3 GHz Northbridge. I think the memory's not stable. 14700K. Oh, you have an iGPU, then yeah, you can you can use it off of the integrated graphics. Just like as long as your motherboard has an HDMI or a display port output, then you should be able to use that. What? No, Micron... No. Best uh, DDR3 is, like, you have PSC, X, um, there's, like, Elpida chips that are really good. Like, Hyper, which I'm not sure what die that is. Um, then there's, uh, there's some, like, you have Samsung 2 gigabit D die, 1 gigabit G die. Uh, Hynix CFR 2 gigabit, as far as I know, is like not completely terrible, but not on par with the others. There's other other people. Hyper is a variant of A die. Okay. Yeah, that's what I figured. I thought it like it was base hyper. And regular base is like not very good. <laughs> and base hyper likes to die for no reason.
Is, is the core voltage not set high enough? Why is it resetting like that? Yeah, 4 gigabit MFR for max max frequency. 4 gigabit BFR is also not too bad, but it's worse than MFR. Like the core voltage too low? And we crashed! Okay, so this is very, very fun. I think this is the memory just, like, giving up. There's an ROG form with a media fire link. Yeah, yeah, I'll look it up. I hope I managed to trigger the, like, recovery this time. I don't think I did. I think the timings might be too tight. If it is, then it's probably TRCD. Did I just hit no or yes? Does anybody... I have a huge variety of DDR3 memory chips. Um, Cause DDR3 is like cool in that you have like a lot of interesting different memory chips, whereas like DDR4, everything that like, most of the DDR4 memory chips behave very similarly and then it's just like how badly do they clock, right? Like. 4 gigabit E die and 4 gigabit D die from Samsung for DDR4. What's the difference between them? E die is just better. That's it. Like they do very similar timings, and E die just outclocks D die. Um, period. There's really nothing more to it than that. It's like E die is like take. Imagine if D die clocked higher. That's E die basically. Um, for 4 gigabit Samsung. And then you have B-Dye, which is just amazing and does everything, except if you get a trash bin of B-Dye, then it looks like C-Dye. And then you have, like, C-Dye, which is like, well, imagine if E-Dye sucked. <laughs> That's, or, and, and then you have, like, D-Dye, which is like, well, imagine if C-Dye sl sucked slightly less, but in terms of timings, it's still very similar. Um, whereas on DDR3, you have some memory chips that'll do things like your TRCD can go really low and other, uh, like, everything else is, like, terrible. But it's just kind of... Like, you have, like, variety, like... Um, yeah, or you have some memory chips which will do, like, really low TRP, and then everything else is kind of mediocre or something. Um, and some memory chips that clock really high, but terrible timings, and others that don't clock really high, but they do do, do tight timings, and that kind of stuff. So, like, DDR3, you have a lot of variety in terms of how the memory chips behave. And DDR4, it's just like, yeah, the TRCD probably needs to be, like, much higher than TCL. And that's that's that. And then TRP is probably going to be similar. Okay, so, well, I guess at this point we should check if this actually works at all. Uh, thanks, uh, Boomer Cosmo, for the five bucks to say thanks for answering questions. Yeah, that, I mean, it's not like this is particularly attention in intensive. I'm surprised how popular this stream is. I guess it's significantly different from the failing at DDR5 <laughs> streams. Like, actually, you know what? I might... I could go through... Eh, no, I don't feel like going through the box of DDR3. It is still not working. Why? How long is the stream until I get bored? BIOS update time? No. Why would I update the BIOS? 
Like, the only platform where I've consistently seen BIOS updates actually make a, like, improvement to memory overclocking is Ryzen. Everywhere else, BIOS updates basically don't do anything. Oh no, Haswell E. If you try to run Has if you try to run Samsung 8 gigabit B die on Haswell E with one of the early BIOSes, it literally won't even post. Um, like it won't boot at all. Like for whatever reason, the CPU just cannot initialize those memory sticks um, unless you update the BIOS. So there, it's like an absolute necessity. But everywhere else, it's been like, yeah, you update the BIOS and things are more or less the same. Um, Okay, how potato is this memory? I think it just reset again. Man, don't tell me this won't even run 1866. That's pathetic. <laughs> to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised. My very first kit of DDR3 was some completely cursed garbage that brick walled at like 17, actually 1700 was not doable. It, it did like 1666 max. Yeah. And this seems to be more, actually this is, this is slightly better because that memory kit I had that didn't go over like 1666, it, it wouldn't even post at 1866. Um, so this is very slightly not as bad. <laughs> but it is still very bad. Can I just drop it all the way down to 1600? Oh no, man, that's so slow. Oh boy, right. I want to... Okay, let's try like 1700. Wait, oh, the BIOS just died again. It's very not stable. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna drop the memory ratio and save and reset. That's about how much time we get before the thing locks up again. This is not the first time I'm dealing with Corsair version 2.12 memory sticks. I got some in some other eBay system. They also sucked. So... I'm not particularly surprised. <laughs> but I didn't remember, like, how much they sucked. But this seems in line. I don't know, are they, like, cooked or something? They're not even that warm. Potato RAM. I mean, when you get it, like, honestly, I, I wanted just the board and the CPU at the price that this was. So the fact that the RAM is, like, a waste of space is just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> at least it works. Okay, we're down to 1600 now, so... 
I'm gonna try bring it up to 1700, see if that works. Uh, that Northridge clock is way too high. And that CPU clock is never gonna work. Okay, let's try like this. Actually, I think maybe... Yeah, because the CPU can definitely run that. The memory sticks, uh, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> I give the memory more voltage, I'm sure that will help. Weren't you in chat earlier talking about how expect no scaling? If not negative scaling? Drop TRAS? No, TRAS is at 30 right now. I'm trying to get into Windows at like 10, 11, like 11, 12, 11 or something. Hey, we're back in Windows! At, yeah, 11, 12, 11, and it wouldn't even run 1866. Garbage. There's <laughs> a lot of really, really bad DDR3. <laughs> And this is certainly some of it. It's not even the worst. I want to say my first kit of DDR3 was 8.34 version number or something like that. Or 8.31. No. I'm pretty sure it was 8-something, though. It might have been 8-1-3. And I think it was single-sided. Anyway, that doesn't matter. It's, like, way too long ago. At the time, I didn't even know what the version numbers really meant. Can't have been 0.3? 8-2-3, maybe, yeah. Is there, like, some memory chip that, like... Four gig I'm pretty sure it was single-sided. So I'm thinking like four gigabit memory chip that brick walls at 1600-ish. Oh. I heard a bunch of coil whine and I was like, wait, did the FFT just crash? No, it just does that. It just makes noises. Well, that did absolutely nothing to the memory performance. Maybe some kind of one gigabit chip then? No, not one gigabit, two gigabit chip. Cause like... Cause I could run like, I could run 1333 at 777, or I could run like 1666 at like 899, and that was it. And 899 was really pushing it. Maybe 2.12? I mean, it might have been, but I feel like the number was bigger. Okay, these are, these by spec are 999. So like, I actually don't think changing, and this actually would line up as like changing, setting the timings looser, like didn't do anything. I remember that. Like I remember trying like 11s and, and it just didn't. Like even 9, 10, 9 was like, 
I think that might have booted like 1700 with a Phenom 2, and that was it. Yeah, let's try 9, 10, 10. You show us your DDR3 box. There's not really anything to see, because all of the DDR3 sticks are in, like, individual... Like, each kit of DDR3 is in its own little anti-static bag. Um, I'm not really thrilled about the way they're stored, because, like, there are memory trays that would probably be better, but the problem with the memory trays is... Well, whatever. Like, it's not, there's not much to see. It's just like a bunch of anti-static bags in a box. <laughs> there's memory sticks in them. Um... Because that way, at least, it's, like, easier to cr keep track of which sticks, like, belong together. Because each anti-static bag is, like, one set of sticks. Alright, the spec t -Rast on this is 24. So I should be able to lower that quite a bit. I wonder if it's even possible with these sticks to get 3000 memory score with an FX. <laughs> Did it crash? Why is it so slow? Hey, is faster! <laughs> okay, I think it can definitely do 3000, I think. Okay, I actually just want to keep trying to push the memory. Clock. Oh, it still boots. That's a good sign. <laughs> What's the memory temperature? I don't know. The the touch meter says not very high. Like, they're just, like, pleasantly warm, so I'm gonna guess they're, like, 30-something. It's not like we're running a stress test on them.
I wonder if it would still work if I put the other two memory sticks back in. <laughs> Oh man, can you imagine running a memory stress test on... Actually, it might not be that slow. I'm not sure, like, if the... Oh, and Dykstra just got very upset. <laughs> okay, so 1760 apparently is too much memory clock. got from eBay a while ago? No, this didn't come with a heatsink. It, it was motherboard, CPU motherboard RAM. The one that came with a heatsink, that would have been the ASRock board. The Fatality board, wouldn't it? That came with a heatsink. I guess let's try 1744 then. No, I want my 2600 North Bridge. Yeah, but then my CPU clock is too high. This should probably run. Well, why would I connect anything to the PCI port? Idiot do 2024 CPUs. Also, I'm pretty sure in my chat, Idiot isn't censored. Well, see, 2024 CPUs are really freaking boring to overclock, so like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> go somewhere else? You broke an FX chip? That is an achievement. LN2 Raptor? If I get LN2, the last thing I want to run is the Intel memory controller with it. <laughs> like, if I put Raptor like on LN2, it's with one core turned on and doing a frequency valid. There is no way in hell I am running anything more complicated than a CPU-Z validation on that platform. And more realistic, and what I'd actually want to run is, like, I have that really modded up GTX 960. I'd like to try that. There's also the 760 that, the DCU 760 I have with a bunch of mods. I'd like to try that. Um, 
Though I think the 960 would be more interesting, though I think the 960's VRM might blow up. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe I have to figure... Because I, I know somebody else blew up one of those 960's already on LN2, so it's like... But it would still probably get pretty far, I think. And it, I'd be interested to see how far it would go on LN2. Because Maxwell, like... Like, that's the only way to have fun overclocking a Maxwell, in my opinion, is putting it on LN2, because at ambient, it doesn't scale. Like, whatever voltage it hits on stock, like, no, whatever clock it hits at stock voltage is literally whatever clock it maxes out at. Because raising the voltage usually just makes it worse. Like, I have never had a Maxwell's card that actually scales with core voltage on, like, ambient cooling. Um... Whatever we got on the memory. Oh, right, this BIOS is so long, I keep forgetting about that. A 1.65. I somehow doubt that's gonna do CL8. <laughs> But we may as well try, and I'm just gonna save another profile. Oh, that's so stupid. Is it okay to have North Bridge faster than HT Link? Yeah, why not? Like, the HT link goes to the, like, on motherboard north bridge for the PCIe. I think it, like, actually might help with GPU performance, but we're not running 3D Mark, so. And I've never actually benched AM3 Plus for, with GPUs. It's always been just, like, Cinebench, Geekbench 3. I think I might have done a little bit of Super Pi. Yeah, I've done Super Pi. Um, very badly. <laughs> um, and what else did I do? Uh, hey, I called it. It doesn't do CL8. Imagine my lack of surprise. I... Yep, it doesn't do CL8. What, 989? I still think that'll, that'll happen. That's like Micron timings, 989. This isn't Micron, this is Alpida. <laughs> what I am tempted to try is just smash more memory voltage into it. I don't imagine it'll do anything, but, well, who knows. Yeah, that didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, just an immediate 84. Is Expo almost as good? I get a few random restarts. Well, evidently it's not very good because you're getting random restarts, which really shouldn't be happening. I have ten and a half year old news. <laughs> Wait, ten and a half years. I'm pretty sure Elpida was still separate from Micron when these memory sticks were manufactured, right? What, what year are these from? 
I think these are from 2012. These are like just before Elpida gets acquired by Micron, I think. So, technically, not Micron. Also, if the memory stick was assembled in 2012, then the memory chips are definitely pre-Micron acquisition. Now, what's kind of crazy is that they kept using the Elpida branding for GDDR5 for, like, forever. And then when they finally switched to Micron branding, the Micron chips are actually good. Whereas the Elpida GDDR5 is, like, notorious for being trash. Like, I can't think of a single GPU where I would be happy to see Elpida memory chips. Okay, so 1.8 on the memory actually doesn't do anything, um, to my complete lack of surprise. Let's try 999. Hey, that posts. Yeah, so CL8 doesn't even work at 1.8 volts, but... Well, I mean, the TRCD is not too surprising. You know what, Mick? You might have been ro right. Elpida GDDR5 is good on most GCN stuff. No, it isn't. It tops out at like 1600. If you get Hynix or Samsung, you can go over 1700. Like, the low memory clock on GCN cards is like directly tied to the Elpida memory chips. Like, that's the main reason so many GCN cards will top out at like somewhere between 1500 and 1600 in my experience. Timing strap mods really well. I'm pretty sure you can run like a 1250 strap on Hynix. At like 1600 or 1750 even. Also, I actually... Oh, I've never actually decoded... The different, like, timings... Like, I have a timing strap decoder now. I've never actually used it to see what the differences are between the different me me memory chip, uh... Like, timing setup... Uh, timings. Um... So, actually, I don't know if, like, 1250 Elpida is tighter than 1250 Hynix. Um... Anyway, uh... We're at 1.65... Well, I guess we can try TRCD8. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah, that doesn't work. It's not Micron. Wait. Okay, no, it doesn't work. It got stuck on a different postcode this time. That's why I was like, wait a minute. But no, it, it, did, it did get stuck. There's some Micron chips that'll do, like, TRCD5 at 1600. Um, everything else about them still kind of sucks, but you can do, like, super low TRCD. Yeah, but the Lightning has all the records, so evidently the Matrix's Alpida memory couldn't outdo the... Lightning, I think those lightnings are Samsung a lot of the time. Or at least the world record lightnings, I think, are all Samsung. So, evidently, Asus, like, really didn't, you know, fix anything there. They should have, instead of figuring out how to keep the mem Elpida memory chips from getting too cold, they should have figured out how to buy Samsung memory chips. <laughs> as far as I know, the Samsung memory chips don't even get, like, don't even have issues with cold, necessarily.
Oh no, it's doing the Aces board thing of it just will not recover this time. You know, I should take a look at the Elpida and the, like, Hynix and Samsung timing straps, because I think that would be kind of interesting. Because I don't, actually don't know if there's, like, how much of a difference there is between them. Like, I would imagine GDDR5 default timings are probably pretty similar to the DDR3 JDEC situation, where the default timings are just kind of the, like, the same for everyone, where it's like, you know, like, JDEC 1600 is 999, or if you're really bad at making memory chips, it's 11 11 11. Does at least TRP get low? Hey, TRP gets low. So finally, something. Nine nine seven, perhaps. Got Porsche memory timings here. Well, it got to the GPU initialization. But will it get through Windows initialization? And the answer is... Oh! It looks like it will. Thanks for the 2 euro, Yannick. Yeah, so it does do 997. I wonder if it does 996. That that would actually be kind of wild if it did 996. Though actually, I does the BIOS have a TRC register? Or does the CPU have a TRC register? Because this could be one of those, like, AMD memory controller things where if you don't lower TRAS and TRP, then, like, no, not TRP, but TRC. And, like, TRC, TRP might not do anything. Actually, no, that doesn't make sense because TRP is used even, like, TRP is always used. It's TRAS that sometimes can get ignored. Well, it run. well, yeah, like, it hasn't frozen on Dijkstra, so... 997 works! It doesn't clock very high, and it doesn't... Um... And it doesn't do low cast latency or TRCD, but it does do TRP7. It's not even like we're running a lot of memory voltage either, which is kind of neat. your highest DJROC. Um, I think like 5333. Actually, not even. I feel like I got better results for, with freaking Micron on Intel 11th gen than with Hynix. Hey, we're almost at 3000 on the memory. I wonder if Cinebench is running any faster. Because on these old CPUs, the, like, the benchmark, because I don't, how much cash do we have? I don't think it's that much. <laughs> Compared to, like, modern chips. Yeah, we only have 8 megabytes of cash, so, like, I think even Cinebench needs to go out to memory. Whereas if you run Cinebench on something modern, it, it just sits in L3.
Yeah, also, I wouldn't th consider DDR3 retro. You got maybe... I have an FX 9590. That's the CPU that I used for 8.34 gigahertz on LN2. We're, we're not going to run it today because, well, it's... It, like, for all core, it's really bad. Hey, we got 8! At, like, not less than 4.9 gigahertz. That's actually pretty nice. Um... It doesn't seem to be benefiting, and, and it wasn't even with, like, real-time or anything, so that's kind of cool. Whoa! Thanks, Red5, for the hundred bucks! Um... And you don't even have a real question for me, so, I, I mean, thanks, I guess. No, oh, I guess I could at least click the little heart button that YouTube gave me. Wait, what? Is this also a button? No, that's... Okay, no, that, that's for like... Ah, damn it. Missed the BIOS. Well, and like that, the stream has now paid for this motherboard. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, like, more... This was a profitable purchase. <laughs> Though I actually like the the thing is I have this like uh Possibly kind of, well, it's not super unrealistic, but I would like to get 8 gigahertz on 8 different CPUs. So honestly, I should probably run Raptor Lake on LN2, because Raptor Lake... I, with one core and no hyper-threading, I'm pretty sure... Or at least I'd really hope that I can get 8 gigahertz on, like, uh, at least two of the Raptor Lakes that I have. That would that would simplify things because I have a eight three twenty I think at eight. I have a the, I have the ninety five ninety at eight point three. Um, I have an wait actually I think I do have an FX chip that's like a potential eight gigahertz candidate and. Like a 6300, that's like a 8 gigahertz candidate. Um, yeah, and I still want to get like a 8370, 8350. You know, might... Well, how actually, wait, how many 13th gen and 14th gens are there? So you have like 13600K, 13700K, 13900K. 14600K, 14700K, 14900K, 14900KS. There's also the 13900KS. So actually, you could do 8 gigahertz on 8 CPUs only using LGA 1700, assuming that you bin enough of them. I think doing it with FX chips is cheaper, probably. <laughs> I don't really count the KF chips as like... Yeah, the, okay, yeah, with the KFs, it would actually be really easy to do 8 on 8. With LGA 1700. Cedar Mill, as far as I know, Cedar Mill requires a lot of binning for 8 gigahertz. Like, it's not, it's not like you don't just buy a random Cedar Mill and it does 8. Whereas with FX chips, that's a relatively F normal occurrence. Unless it's a 20, like, unless it's a 2015 or newer FX, in which case it's really rare that they do 8 gigahertz or higher. Also, earlier today it occurred to me that, like, uh, I could do something about the storage situation in my flat, which would free up space for running LN2 again, so... I'm not making any promises, but... Um, yeah, I am kind of annoyed that I haven't managed, like, gotten to run any LN LN2, and now that, like, I feel... Um, like, technically, I am still behind on, like, content related to modern hardware, but, like... I feel, like, done 
with especially LGA 1700 at ambient, so it's like, yeah, there's not really anything I want to do with that. And so it's like, and we have like a few, like, there should be a few months before any new stuff launches, so it's like having, like, being able to run LN2 would be really nice. Um,. Because, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything, lo like, worthwhile launching until the second half of this year. 996, maybe? LN2 Live when? I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to make any pro promises. Though, yeah, like, thanks for the another $100. Um, but, like, like, the flat definitely needs to get, like, reorganized to, to run LN2. But once the reorganization is done, like, yeah, it wouldn't actually be a problem. Wait, we can run 996. Man, th see, this is why DDR3 is so, so much more interesting than all the later memory tech. Because, like, you get random garbage to your DDR3 memory kits and, like, you still find, like, like, this isn't good. You know, this isn't good RAM. This isn't fast RAM. But it is kind of neat that you can do 996. And it's not like we're at insane voltage or anything. I think we're still at 1.65. Right, not Cinebench. If you want, need me to pick more stuff... No, I, I figured out some more vertical storage options. Um, though, I do have some boards that I want to get rid of again, but I think I might actually try to, like, sell them instead of just, like, getting rid of them. I mean, my LN2, well, I haven't taught, like, I haven't contacted my LN2 supplier in a long time, so I don't know if their prices have gone up, but it used to be, like, a pound a liter. So, yeah, Red 5 has, like, more than funded a full, like, fill-up of every doer I have. Oh, and 996 crashes Geekbench. Can we fix that with more voltage? Is the Venom still good enough? For what? For anything with a cold bug, hell no. <laughs> but I'm thinking if I'm going to run LN2, like, for LGA 17, for 8 gigahertz, it's probably fine. TRP is real. Yeah. I wonder if it scales with volts. We're going to go slowly on the voltage, because there's a few DDR3 memory chips where if you just smash them with voltage, they get worse. Um, and, and sometimes it happens, like, quite early. Um, like, yeah, I think there's some Samsung 2 gigabit thing that I have in my collection. Had in my collection? I don't know. I might, I'm not sure if I still have it. Um, oh, no, I don't think I still have it. But, yeah, I had some Samsung, like, 2 gigabit, where if you went over, like, 1.72, I want to say, it would just immediately get worse. Like, it would just clock worse as soon as you went a little over, like, it definitely didn't scale to 1.8. And there's, like, a bunch of other DDR3 chips that scale to, like, 2.2 volts or something, where it's, like, I, you, you, like, there are memory, the, like, you are concerned for the health of the memory controller, because the memory controller will actually die before the memory chips do. Okay, I think raising the voltage made it worse. Man, if this works better at 1.6, that'll be hilarious. <laughs> Peak DDR3 experience. No keyboard detected. Yeah, but like, I didn't do anything. Why are you moaning about no keyboard?
Okay, keyboard's back again. I guess the unstable memory, like, killed the USB port. <laughs> Some DDR5 still scales to over 2 volts. Samsung doesn't, like, scale at all as far as I can tell. Like, it, it scales to maybe 1.4 and past that it just doesn't care in terms of timings. Yeah, so it still boots at 1.6. Yeah, so this might be one of those memory chips that rolls over super early and, well, I mean rolls over super early. <laughs> Clock's like complete garbage, so... But even like timing is rolling over at like low volts is a thing, potentially. Then the OS hasn't like disintegrated yet. Oh boy. The mouse is freaking out. Okay, there we go. Uh, 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 oh, oh. I think, wait. Oh, it's in, it's Windows installing drivers. Yeah, because I moved the US, I used, moved the keyboard from one USB port to another, and I guess I had to, like, reinstall it. So Samsung DDR5 is worse? No, it, like, Samsung DDR5 doesn't scale in terms of voltage, but, like, it does pretty decent timings. Like, I'd rather have... Actually, I'm not sure how it compares to the newest Micron memory chips, but the original Micron memory chips are way worse. Samsung DDR5 actually does, like, okay in terms of performance. Um, it's just, like, with Hynix, you have the option to just keep raising the voltage and, and the timings just keep getting lower, whereas with Samsung, you keep raising the voltage and nothing happens. You can do like, you can do like 6,000, 30, 32, uh, 32 or something like that at like 1.35 volts. And if you set it to 1.6 volts, it does the exact same timings. Nothing changes. Um, I have a video go like showing uh, that. Well, it looks like TRP6 won't work, unless unless it's like, or it, like, less voltage helps? I, I guess it might just be too high. You don't like industrial, like, noise? <laughs> Lo-fi industrial noise metal? That's actually probably accurate. <laughs> Okay, well, I think we're going to give up on TRP6 and go worry about other timings that do things. Yeah, let's try T1. Uh, okay, no. The, the XMP on the JDEC on this is 24, so we're going to go to 24 first. Wait, do I not have a TRC set timing? Oh, no, we have it. It's just row, like, TRC is just labeled row cycle time. Okay. Which is what RC stands for. Uh, 24 plus 7 is 31. No mini IT any changes to that. So the issue is I haven't tested any of the ITX boards. Um, I am going to, so I have poor self-control. So I finally bought the 8600G instead of an 8700G, but I bought an MSI ITX with it and it should show up tomorrow. So I might do a stream with it over the weekend. Well, the other thing is I actually also like, like, the, so the music that plays in the background of the streams is made by me, and I actually like a decent amount of it. I don't really like the first album, and I don't really like the most of the second album, but, like, the later albums, I actually just straight up like. And, like, this track, I think, is, well, okay, there's some tracks that are kind of fillery, but... They don't annoy me like, say, the first album does. <laughs> First half of first album and, like, first half of... Se uh, no, not first half of second album, but, like... Like, there's a portion of the second album that I'm like, eh, this kind of sucks. Um, Do 
Did you put distortion plugins on every track? Yeah, that's like my default. I use, I put distortion, well, actually not every, if you mean like every track in the DAW? No. Oh. But almost. So, some, some, some of the music is actually like there's distortion on absolutely everything. Um, because I love distortion. It's like, you, you have something that sounds weak and like just yeah it just doesn't sound very good you just put distortion on it instantly it sounds better <laughs> I can hear it on the drums too yeah that was like a really early like actually the drums don't get a distortion well it's not like so the doll obviously has like a default distortion plugin which like yeah um which makes distortion, but usually what I do for the drums is I actually run them through a guitar amp simulator, which obviously distorts them, but it does it in a, like, better way than just, like, plain distortion. Though I think some tracks I just put plain distortion on them as well. Actually, a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll put distortion on, then run it into a guitar amp simulator, because the, the git what I found is, like, the guitar amp simulator gets, like, sounds more it, like it gives you somewhat more interesting sounds if like you start with something that's like a pure sine wave and you just run that into the uh, amp simulator that kind of sucks so first you put distortion on whatever the clean thing is and then you run it into the amp sim and then it's better <laughs> So yeah, there's basically distortion on absolutely everything I bought a MSI B550 ITX. Melodic Doom Metal? See, I listen to, like, uh, Deathcore, Metalcore, Grindcore, uh, what else? Mathcore, uh, actually a little, some, uh, some black metal, um, uh, Actually, some post-hardcore as well. New metal, industrial metal. So, yeah, that kind of stuff. Okay, what is read to pre? Oh, RTP. Ras to ras, four. Write to read. Um. I imagine all of these can go to four, probably, right? Okay, we're not gonna do that just yet, but I think something like this, that, that looks reasonable to me. TWR 12, that's insane. That's like, that's like DDR4 levels of write recovery. Um, why are these two not the same thing? Eh, one T might work. Eh, no, let's let's leave it a two T for now. Try T W R at five. It could work. Oh yeah, it, it might. Unless you know that version two point one two doesn't do that. <laughs> You're trolling. <laughs> So this track that's playing right now, this is actually inspired by uh, a track, well, one of the, yeah, like the original soundtrack for Cruelty Squad, one of the levels. Never listened to Ada Roop. Uh, I've heard of her. But I've not... I might have clicked, like, I've stumbled across the Bandcamp page. I might have clicked on a few tracks and then gone like, oh, this isn't really for me. Uh, what did I want to change? Oh, right, the TWR to 5. Heck yeah! <laughs> Actually, I don't see why that wouldn't work. <laughs> or why it couldn't work.
work, it does indeed. I don't know what a loop back passed through a effect is. Though I'm, I'm actually, I, based on your past comments in chat, I think you're just making stuff up. As far as I know, the metal archives straight up do not allow metal core bands, so not really that useful for me. <laughs> Okay, so something is too low. Might be TCWL. It's Metal Archives. Yeah, I know, but Metal Core has metal in the name. <laughs> And I know technique like the the justification is like it's more like a hardcore like it's hardcore with some metal influences rather than metal with hardcore influences but like I don't really care either way it sounds fine Yeah, I'm pretty sure they don't allow metal core Or that might have changed at some point. But I usually just like find music through like uh, r slash metalcore. Actually, that's not true. Well, I stumble across a lot of things from r slash metalcore, and then sometimes I'll just like go on Bandcamp and just click on things in the metal genres. Like, I'll go to the industrial metal uh, tag and then just click on things until, like, oh, this sounds good. Um. I'm kind of interested to see if, like, putting the other two memory sticks and bringing this back up to quad rank wouldn't make Geekbench run a bit faster. Okay, I don't think that was a TRC problem. Filtered via genre and found a bunch of... Oh, so I guess they changed that. Or might be mixing it with some other, like, metal something. I really don't see why TWR would be a problem. Have you ever heard of Imperial Circus Circus Dead Decadence? Uh, no. What is it? So that sounds like a cool name. Like, what genre is it? Man, YouTube stream UI is very uncooperative with me randomly clicking on things. Oh, it's heavy metal. Yeah, it's probably not going to do anything for me. Like, I might still check it out, but, like, I don't usually... 
Yeah, like heavy metal as a genre isn't really something I I listen to. So symphonic death metal. Wait, that wouldn't that actually that might be up my alley. Well, well, uh, I mean I'll just check it out and see. Okay, I think the TWR might be still too low, or whatever I did to that one timing that was like seven on one channel and six on the other. So my progression, well, so my interest in like extreme metal genres started with Pig Destroyer. I, well, and before that it was like Slipknot. So I went from like Slipknot to like Pig Destroyer. I went straight all the way down to Grindcore. Um, because like, because basically my my thought. Oh, and at the time I also discovered. Uh, uh, Infant Annihilator. Um, and I didn't actually discover Metalcore until much later. With, like... I'm trying to think what was the first, like, Metalcore band that I actually liked. Because, like, I heard Bring Me the Horizon pretty early on, because they were huge, but... Like, I think the first song that I heard from them was, like, uh, I've, what was it? Oh, man. I can't remember the name. It's the second track off their, off of Suicide Citizen. Because I listen to my music, like, album by album, so I, like, remember which track in the album it is, but not necessarily the name. Um, it's Chelsea Smile. Yeah. So that was, like, the first Bring Me the Horizon uh, song that I heard that I actually knew, like, it's by Bring Me the Horizon, and yeah, not really, well, at the time, not really a fan of it, um, uh, but the, the song that got me into Bring Me the Horizon would be, uh, Blacklist and Crucify Me. Um, I think it was Crucify Me first and then Blacklist. It's like, I liked Crucify Me, so I checked out the rest of the album, and then, like, Blacklist was like, Oh my god, this is amazing. I wish they made more tracks like that one. Oh yeah, I listened to, to Deftones as well. Oh, I also listened to Rammstein. Uh, that was, yeah, so Rammstein I listened to before Slipknot because my dad listened to them. Um, and my dad, like, introduced me to Ministry, which the, is a, like, industrial metal band. Then the hell? This was, like, working pretty good, and then I changed a bunch of time- Wait, don't tell me it can't do Rast for Ras 4. What kind of potato memory chip can't do RDRD 4? So the very first metal I heard was actually Linkin Park, and that was because like uh, my cousins listened to Linkin Park. Like I used to listen to Meteora, the album, when I was like seven or eight or something. Because like, yeah, I had the al like I got the album. Actually, what really annoyed me is my brother got Meteora. If I remember correctly, it was like we both got an album for Christmas. And I got... Uh, Reanimation, which is like a remix of Hybrid Theory. Um, which is fine, but it's less metal than hy like the Hybrid Theory was. And it's also less metal than Me Meteora is. 
and I really preferred Meteora. But like the the only difference it made, because ultimately we ripped the albums to the to the PC anyway, so that didn't really matter that much. Like I could listen to both of them, but like my bro like the CD belonged to my brother. Yeah, so the CD like the the album lived in his room and I had reanimation in my room, so <laughs> that was the only difference there. <laughs> but I had the worst album in my opinion. <laughs> They made, like, two high-end AM3 Plus boards. The UD7 and the Crosshairs. Okay, three. I guess the Sabertooths also count. Manufacturer, do you recommend for Z87, Z97? For what? Because, like, at the time, like, I feel like at the time, like, so, for extreme overclocking, the, the Z97 OC formula is, like, the golden, like, is, like, peak, as far as I know. I am very fortunate to have one that I got off of eBay, because I think it had a bent CPU socket pin or something. Um, and then, like, Asus was extremely popular at the time. Um, though if you want to, like, really push memory overclocking, I think it's primarily the impact that you're searching for. And, uh, so the Maxima 7 impact. Um, which I have, I think I have a 6 or a 7 impact, and it's, like, kind of broken. I still haven't gotten around to fully fixing it yet. Um... Wasp Machine, could you, like, rein it in a little? Or I might actually add an auto mod to the YouTube channel. Ford in Z97 for RAM OC. Um, any Asus board, probably? It's not going to be better than an OC formula, but yeah, the... Best, best one would be the OC. Wait, I, if you're pushing four memory sticks at the same time, I think Asus might have an edge. Or, yeah, the Z97 uh, SOC boards from Gigabyte. Now, I'm not sure that the SOC boards are that different from the mainstream Gigabyte boards for the platform. Like, yeah, they have the extra overclocking features, but I think in terms of memory, they might be similar. Unless there's, like, special BIOSes that are, like, drastically different. Man, is it, does it really not do RDR, like, or is it TWR? Okay, you know what? I, I refuse to believe it. And, well, no, because I raised it to 5 and it still crashed, so... How stupid is Fury X Crossfire? If you're just running 3D Mark, it just works. Like, really, it does, does just kind of work, as long as you have enough PCI slots. <laughs> There's that overkill MSI board, the Z790X Power, um, or, I mean, the Z97X Power. Um, as far as I know, MSI has a bit of a reputation for having, like, slightly worse memory performance than, than everybody else. Z97 OC formula is super rare, at least on UK eBay. Yes, yes, it is. That's why I'm very happy that I managed to get one. I have, I have a... I... I don't think I have the Z87. Yeah, no, I don't have the Z87 OC formula, but I do have the MATX Z87 OC formula. Um, I 
the superposition scale? Oh, I don't... Probably it's a benchmark. So it probably has better support than most games. Huh, apparently it doesn't... Wait, what? Wait, do, do I need to raise the voltage back up again? Wait, it is at 1.65 volts. So it has to be this then. Like there's there's nothing else that it could be at this point. Cuz like if the TRFC was too low, I'm pretty sure it just wouldn't post. Nah, if we were, I, if the refresh cycle was the problem, it would be way more obvious. I think it's very statistically unlikely that these memory chips require a refresh cycle of 170 nanoseconds. <laughs> Because I, I think if it's off, then it's off by a lot. For refresh cycle. But why does it keep erroring out? Like, these are these two are literally what it started with. This is a lot lower. This is what it was defaulting to. possibly need RDRD6, right? That would be horrendous. One sixty NS spec for two gigabit? Uh I have no idea. Might be. It was defaulting to three hundred though. Already, already at six. That's gonna be like lame as hell. <laughs> I 
Oh wait, not R D R D R R R D. Are the mem sticks too hot or something? Nope, they're still just pleasantly warm. Like, what's it so upset about? Honestly, I'm kind of tempted to just try a frequency validation, and then, like, if I actually care about pushing the memory, then I'll put, like, better memory sticks in there. Because <laughs> these really suck. <laughs> no, I'm using a 240mm, uh... Arctic AIO, which is just like a, like, this is a really old Arctic AIO, so it's one of the, like, Asatec rebrands. Not, like, one of the, like, later on, Arctic started to make their own, like, AIOs, as in, like, own pump design, own, uh, like, everything. Um, whereas this is just, like, Arctic, uh, spec radiator, but with Asatec pump and cold plate. And is your best DDR3 memory kit? Uh, it kind of depends on the platform. But it's actually probably not, because I don't think I have any really strong... Wait, no, I have G I have G-Dai. As a bunch of single rank sticks. And I think one of them is bent. Um, so probably the G-Dai sticks. And then I do have some PSC that can do like 2600, 8128. Actually, I think it even does like 2666, 813, 8, something like that. Or 2700, 813, 8. But that only works on like Intel, and AMD it maxes out at like 2550, 8, 12, 8. And with the Samsung sticks, um. I don't think I've had any of my Samsung sticks above like 2666 91212. 12. Sadly enough. Like really good Samsung starts at like 2800 91212 and goes all the way. I think some of the insane kits were like 3000 1212 12 or something like that. And, and yeah, mine mine I've not done 3000 CL9. Um Though, I'd, I'd like to blame the boards for that. <laughs> 3000 on DDR3 is actually relatively easy. Okay, well... No, I think I literally did it on some random 1600... Oh no, that was 2933, I think, or 2800. On, like, a random 1600-rated Hynix stick. Um, it's mostly, like, you just need Haswell. Like, you need a good Haswell CPU with a good motherboard, and then, like, 2933 gets pretty easy, assuming that you have Hynix MFR. BFR can kind of do it. Well, 2933 is actually very doable on BFR, but, like, 3000 is, is much more challenging. Okay, so we're back to, like, everything auto, and now it works again. Yeah, what is this? Why is it 6-7? What is that? Oh, anyway, let's try 4. Yeah, recently I wanted to pick up a 14700K motherboard and memory combo. 
Um, but I, I decided not to, because, like, it wasn't really that rare a motherboard. The price wasn't actually insane. Like, 4790Ks are, like, ridiculously priced, because they're, like, the best CPU that goes in that socket. So, the price on them is horrible. Um, and this was, like, as a bundle, it was actually kind of, like, the price looked okay. But, yeah, in the end, like, it was 100 quid, and I was like, eh, I need to buy the 8600, like, I need to buy an APU or something, and realistically, how soon will I actually get around to running this? And it's, like, probably not very. Um, so I decided not to. Broadwell? No, Broadwell's worse. I think even Ivy Bridge is better than Broadwell. It's just, like, Ivy Bridge has a lot of variants, from what I've heard. Like, some chips will, like, really struggle to go over 2400, while others will go all the way up to, like, 2800. Well, 5775? Uh, no. Well, depends what you're doing, but from a overclocking perspective, 4790K is way better. The 5775 is, like, a good gaming CPU because of the extra, L uh, extra like, ED RAM, like, sitting on it. The L4 cache, if you will. Um, no, from an overclocking perspective, the 4790K is better. And general workloads, the 4790K is better. Did it crash? Yes, it did. Interesting. BFFT, I want to say, is CPU. Okay, you know what? I'm kind of bored of Geekbench, so we're just going to go and see which cores on the CPU are best. Um, so we're going to power down. I'm going to clear CMOS. Set the voltage to 1.65, LLC to ultra high. <laughs> and then just like... Uh raise the core ratio in the OS. Okay, we're going to stay with high initially, and then later worry about that. Yep, I don't see anything else worth changing. Oh, right, forgot to 
turn APM off. This is so much simpler on gigabyte boards because all of the stuff you need to turn off is in the same menu. So you just go enter, turn off, then and then arrow down, right? And you just like it, it's basically just like a pattern that you can do on the keyboard to disable everything in instantly instead of like navigating the BIOS to where the stuff is. Wait, did it just give me a CPU fan error? Didn't I tell you to ignore the fans? Dumb board. Okay, so for this we just need CPU-Z, um, which we're going to use the 32-bit version, and PS-Check, and that's it. And then we just go like that, okay. Just need P0 and P4. Yep, that's good. And then we want we're at six point one point six five, so we're gonna try first five gigahertz. Yep, that works, no problem. Five point one. Obviously, I'm not saving the actual validation file, so like, but the thing is, I'd need to like clean things up a bit for that. But also, like, we're not doing anything. Five two. Okay, this all shuffling the windows around is starting to annoy me. Oh, that well, that doesn't help capture card things. <laughs> okay, well, yep, I'm, I'm not thrilled about the... Okay, we're, we're gonna put this here, I guess. Oh, no! Can I still... Oh, wait, no, I can't change the frequency it's, if it's all the way over there. Okay, we're gonna put this, like, here. Drop those. I need to I need to see the frequency. I think this this will work. Yes. <laughs> I still have access to all of the cores and I can still see the frequency. This is awful. Um Okay, but that's 5.3. 5.4? Uh, that's not, not too bad. I don't think I've ever seen a CPU not do 5.4 when when doing it this way, but Okay, no, it's it's pretty bad. <laughs> five five instant reset at one point six five. Oh, it's CPU overvoltage error. That's what it's complaining about. Dumb board. <laughs> How bad is Alpita 2 gigabit? Very bad. <laughs> Lip doesn't run 1866. 
Uh, cast latency doesn't scale with voltage at all. Uh, the only, like, the primary is basically maxed out at, like, 997 with a DDR3 of, like, 76, 1760 memory speed. Garbage. Absolute trash. If you get this, uh, like, I don't know, like, give it away for free or something, because it's not going to win any benchmarks. Okay, we've got our AMD Confidential tool that I'm not supposed to have access to. Um, I, and there we go. And we're just going to turn off all the P-States we do not need. There we go. Um, okay, so previous best core maxed out at 5.4. We're just going to quickly check that. Yep, 5.4. Now we're going to switch to core 2. And check if that does 5.4. And it does. Okay, so since it does 5.4, does it do 5.5? Five five? And the answer is no. Surprisingly consistent. Why does it still have the boost state? I've never actually seen PS Check not have all of the boost states. Like, even if you disable everything in the BIOS, you open PS Check, and the first thing you have to do is always disable all the extra P states. I guess I should have set the voltage monitoring to disabled. This board uh, turned up in, like, surprisingly clean condition. A lot of the, like, not, like, AM3 Plus boards that I've gotten off of eBay have been absolutely filthy. Like, I got one with literal dirt on it. Like, dirt. Not, like, house inside dirt. Like, const like dirt. Like, the stuff plants grow in. Right? Um... So that was a fun, fun motherboard to wash. Actually, that wasn't that bad. Like, I, I'll take a motherboard covered in dirt over a motherboard that smells of cigarettes. Because washing cigarette smoke out of, out of hardware is, like, a nightmare. Um, Okay, so core 2, core 4. Also seems to do 5.4 pretty good. But does it do 5.5? I'll be really surprised if it, like, if we don't have at least... Man, this CPU seems to be very consistent. This might be the first time I've ever seen an FX where, like, like every single one of the CCDs so far is, like, the same. This is crazy. <laughs> I've never seen that. If the last one also insta-crashes at 5.5 and do works at 5.4, um, that's insane. Uh, like, because literally every FX I've tried before, like, there's a little bit of difference core to core. At least, like, 100 megahertz. Like, there's, there's no way the entire thing only does 5.4.
Oh, so, okay, there. <laughs> there is a... <laughs> The last... Okay, so this is a 5454-5453 chip. It's really bad. This is, like, a really bad CP. Like, I've, like, I've done validations up to, like, I think... I think I had, like, an FX6300 that validated, like, 5.7 on air. Right? Oh no, it was 5.6. Yeah, so this thing is a potato. I don't know, maybe maybe there's like a chance that on liquid nitrogen it gets like massively better, but I really, really doubt it. Because it won't even run Cinebench at 5 gigahertz. Right? Whereas like, like it, it does Cinebench at like just 4.9 on water cooling. Like if I had to guess this is a 7 point, like for validation, I'm going to guess this is like a 7.5 CPU on liquid nitrogen. Which is not good. I think I might be done. Like, technically, I could, like, swap CPU. Actually, no, I, I don't want to swap CPUs. The, the mounting hardware, uh, I have. Like, I don't... The board didn't come with a backplate, so I'm using some, like, random plastic black backplate that I got from a different motherboard, and that backplate is just, like... Like, it, it doesn't... Like, it's a pain, is, is what it is. It doesn't work with the, like, normal Asetek mounting hardware, so I had to improvise something, and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I don't feel like swapping CPUs with that. Um. Oh, actually, I want to just quickly check the FX8120 hardware bot rankings again, because, like... Uh, I don't know, like, well, I think, also, I've been streaming for, like, three and a half hours. Um... I might do something more with this CPU, um, but I don't feel like doing it right now, basically, or do I? No, because, like, the 8600G is showing up tomorrow, so, like, me, like, overdoing it today is probably not the best idea I've, I'll, I'd have. Like, it, yeah, if I decided to overdo it, that would not be the best decision, right? Because, like, people... I imagine people might be more interested in the 8600G than this extremely... Uh, I, I don't know. Like, I've never been to FX8120, so for all I know, this isn't even that bad. But in the grand scheme of F FX chips that I've tested, this is trash. So I don't see a point in, uh, like, overdoing it with a CPU that is trash. Um. There's no way that I'm running anything like that. I might, I might be able to beat this, because I was getting, like, 8 at, like... Yeah, I was getting, like, 8 points at slightly under 4.9 gigahertz. Um, so with, like, better memory, I think it might be possible to, to beat that. What even is that? So that might be kind of interesting to do. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh boy, this is JDEC. <laughs> oh, that's Northbridge frequency. That's probably hurting the score more than the memory, I think. Is that Northbridge clock? Um.
That ship is way better than mine. If if that voltage is real, which it may or may not be, but if it is real, that this this chip's like way better than mine. So actually, this one might just be. T Wait, this is on air cooling. Oh man, okay, this chip is amazing compared to mine. If we tried to run this... Wait, this is like a three heat pipe. No, it's four heat pipes. Okay, this chip... Way better than the potato I am using here. Like, way better. Um, like, I think with this chip on the cooling I have here, I think would do like 5-1. Because it's doing, like, it's doing four point... It's doing almost five on a freaking basic air cooler. And I'm over here with an AIO. And, like, struggling to do five. <laughs> well, not even doing five at all. Um, this is apparently on water cooling. Wait, okay, that voltage is way low. For supposedly water cooling. Four point seven. Do these people just like? Okay, this one's actually bad. I think. Yeah, this one's probably actually bad, or the motherboard is holding it back. Wait, what motherboard is? Oh, oh, oh no, oh, oh. <laughs> Actually no, this shouldn't have the this shouldn't have overcurrent protection. So the main concern here wouldn't be the motherboard randomly shutting down on you mid run, it would be motherboard randomly dying mid run. I, I'm pretty sure this doesn't have the OCP that the, the later models do from Gigabyte. Um Either way I still think the CPU is kinda trash. <laughs> Man, there's really not much information for, like, Cinebench on these chips, is there? Yeah, because they were so bad. Like, at the, like, you wouldn't want one of these. And now they're, like, dirt cheap. But, and I'm kind of surprised that they're not more popular, because AM3+, Plus, in my opinion, is, is... Especially if you're, like, trying to learn to run liquid nitrogen, I think AM3 Plus is, like, the best starting point because the FX chips run on liquid nitrogen like they do on air cooling. Um, so you have, like, you know, so you can sort of figure out, like, just, like, insulation and, like, what, you know, like, the workflow without having to put out the fires that you get on... Like, Ryzen on liquid nitrogen is is absolute nightmare fuel, um, except 2000 series. 2000 series is actually pretty okay, but like 3000 series, 5000 series, like the CPU does not like running at low temperatures at all. Like for example, the Threadripper 3960X that I have, I ran that on liquid nitrogen. The most annoying part of running that chip on liquid nitrogen was that not only does it have a cold boot bug, that cold boot bug has a temperature range. <laughs> So there's like a certain range of temperatures. Well, it simply will not start. And it'll start below that and it'll start above that, but not in between those two temperature points. And it also like, if it gets too cold, it also won't start. Um, so you have like this dead zone in terms of temperatures where it, like it, you can't restart the system. Um, so, and actually if you're really cold, it sometimes doesn't want to start any, like sometimes it'll start at very low temperatures. Sometimes it won't. And then there's, like, a range where it definitely won't start. And it definitely boots at, like, minus 50. Um, and then below that, things get really annoying. <laughs> right? Whereas with FX chips, like, you can literally... Like, the, these actually run on liquid nitrogen like they do on air cooling, which is amazing. Um, it means that you really don't have... Like, you can... Like, yeah. For, like, a first session, it means you're not... Like, you're actually going to get somewhere. Um... Probably. Whereas with a lot of other platforms, you take them on liquid nitrogen and things just start breaking. 
very, very quickly. Um, LGA 1700 I don't think is too bad, but, like, one issue I remember running into on, like, Z690 when taking it on LN2, this was, like, 12900K, 12600K, is that uh, as it cooled down, the, like, mounting hardware would con contract, um, and so the CPU would, like, lose socket pressure, and then you'd get stuck on, like, postcode 54. It basically, like, it couldn't initialize the memory, because the, as the motherboard cooled down, which was just, like, yeah. So that that was that was really fun. Uh, <laughs> it's just like the, the system cooled down, and then suddenly it's like, nope, won't post anymore. And the thing is, like, it would just happen randomly during the session. Like, it would work, and then it like you'd restart it, and then it just like wouldn't initial. Like, it would just wouldn't. Um, and then like uh, Z390, there's like a bunch of voltages you have to set in order to get the CPUs to work at very low temperatures. If you're on KB Lake, the thermal paste is gonna, uh, the thermal paste likes to crack. So if you go below like minus uh, 160, the thermal paste will regularly just kind of disconnect from the CPU, and then then things get very uh, well bad. Um, X299 also likes to break the thermal paste unless you have a soldered X299 chip. Actually, if you have a soldered X299 chip, it's not too bad. The memory controller gets a little funky, but not... Like, it's not like a Phenom 2... Like, early Phenom 2 levels of funky, or Ryzen levels of funky. Um, actually, Ryzen 2000 was really well behaved. I, I think that might be entirely dependent on what motherboard you have for 2000 series Ryzen, but it was actually really well behaved. Um, but the... But then, like, like AM3 Plus is the one platform where I can actually, like, I literally just, like, put LN2 pot on motherboard, and it, it, like, it runs. There's no, like, oh, I need to remember what voltage is or whatever. No, it just works. It's great. <laughs> so, I'm, like, surprised that there's not more uh, scores for these chips, because, like, these days, these are dirt cheap. The motherboards are a bit difficult, like, the good motherboards are a bit annoying to get. But it's like, like, because it's like crosshair formula. Um, the Gigabyte UD3 boards are like, they're usable, but they have the whole, like, the VRM doesn't... Well, you won't run Cinebench on those, so I guess that's kind of an issue. Unless you have, like, a 6-core or a quad-core, which is not an 8120. Um, the Sabertooth is fine, though. Um, and the Sabertooth isn't very rare. So, yeah, you could use, like, a Sabertooth or a cross... Like, Sabertooths and crosshairs if you want, like, brain-dead simple. If you want to have, like, the VRM hates you, you get a... Actually, the UD5 from Gigabyte is awful. Uh, it doesn't... The voltage control on that board is a mess. Um, uh, UD7 probably has the same problem as the UD5, as in for validations. Actually, for Cinebench, it might be okay, because you can't run Cinebench at the voltages that you use for CPU-Z, because Cinebench just gets way too hot. So, actually, the UD5 might be okay for Cinebench, but it's not okay for CPU-Z. Because for CPU-Z, you need over 2 volts, and that board stops at, like, 1.95 or something stupid like that. And the worst part is, is, like, in the BIOS, it actually does... Like, the BIOS says it can go up to 2.2 volts. The board does not go up to 2.2 volts. It, at, you, if you punch in 1.95, it gives you 1.95. If you punch in 2 volts, it gives you 1.95. you punch in 2.2 volts, it gives you 1.95. I remember getting very annoyed by that when I discovered that, because I was on liquid nitrogen when I discovered that. Because you wouldn't you wouldn't figure that out until you're on liquid nitrogen, because if you do that at ambient, it's going to kill the CPU. Um, so, yeah, like, for AM3+, Plus, getting a... like, But if you... Like, the boards are a bit annoying to get, because, um, like, getting a good one is kind of annoying. I think the Azrock Extreme 9 and the Fatality might also be okay, but I've, I've not tested those myself. But, like, the Asus boards... Um, like, Sabertooth, Crosshair on Liquid Nitrogen, very easy to run. And actually, even the cheap boards uh, are very easy to run. Like, the main issue you run, run into is not the... Like, you're not going to get, like, oh, my motherboard doesn't have this voltage that is absolutely necessary in order for the CPU to function on Liquid Nitrogen. That's not an issue with FX chips. The issue is, like, oh, I took my FX chip on Liquid Nitrogen and the VRM on this motherboard has no chance of powering it. Um, either because the VRM shuts down, or because the voltage limit on the motherboard is too low, or because the VRM literally just up and dies <laughs> if you try to run Cinebench. Um, 
So, and usually if the motherboard's voltage limit is too low, it's because the VRM will up and die if you set the voltage higher. <laughs> but other than that, great platform for LN2 overclocking. Um, by far the easiest to run, assuming that the motherboard is up to the task. Which mostly just means not blowing up. <laughs> Locked AM3 and AM3 Plus isn't... Wait, they're not locked, though. The... Oh, you mean the, like, the Phenom. There's, like, no locked FX chips. Yeah, I can't think of a single FX chip that's locked. The lo For Phenom 2s, yeah, you have a bunch of locked CPUs, and I guess those wouldn't be popular for anything but valids. The UD... I actually like the BIOS on the UD3s. Or, well, I have, like, a UD3 equivalent. Like, it's the same VRM as a UD3. But um, it also comes with a postcode. That's, like, the one one difference. Because my f the board I've used for most of my valids was the 990FX Gaming. And the VRM is a problem. It shuts down trying to run Cinebench. It shuts down trying to get into Windows if the chip is thirsty enough. Um... Can you do a video overclocking the 7500F someday? I'm not sure that I can get a 7500F easily. Yeah, that CPU is kind of a pain to get in the UK. So that's kind of the main limitation of it. Yeah, I think I can only get it with a motherboard by the looks of things. Because I think AMD doesn't sell it, like, uh, as a just a CPU in the UK, and I, I can't even find a tray listing from, like, a UK retailer. I have to buy it from, like, AliExpress. Forty-two multi-limit? The high multipliers don't even work, though, in my experience. Like, they're not good. How did you get this for $30? Well, well, I didn't get it for $30. I got it for 23 quid. But I converted it to USD because that makes for a more clickable title. Which FCLK on Ryzen 7000 is best for performance? It depends. At like six, like if you can, so peak Ryzen performance happens at like, and this is assuming that you bin CPUs until you get one that's just absolutely amazing, uh, is like 6600 with 2200 FCLK. Realistically, most CPUs are not doing that. Um, so then your options are like 6400 with 2133, which works on some CPUs, not most. Then you have the option of 6200 either with 2200 FCLK or like 2166 FCLK or 2066 FCLK. Um, which one of those three you'd want to use depends on the CPU. If you get really unlucky, you're stuck with like 6000 at 2000 or 6000 with like 2133, 2166 or 2200. Again, depending on what the CPU will be willing to do. Um, why was it so cheap? Uh, the motherboard is slightly broken. Some of the fan headers don't work. Crosshair 4 formula for FX? It should be fine as far as I know. I, I've never tried FX chips on, on one of those, but I do have one. Um... But yeah, I haven't, haven't tried it. I think the main issue is, you does it support pile driver? I don't think it ha has pile driver support. I think it only supports bulldozers. But other than that, it should be fine. Oh, if you only have offset V-Core, it might max out kind of low on the core voltage, but if you're on dry ice, that's not a concern. 
Because that was the issue with the Gigabyte board, is it was offset voltage, and I was like, oh, it offsets to, like, plus 600, and I can set the vid to 1.55, so it, logically it should go over 2 volts, and... Uh, no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Turns out, plus 600 offset does, does not add 600 to arbitrary vids. Can pump over two volts. Eh, you won't need that on dry ice, though. In fact, I think on dry ice that might break the CPU. Or have you actually tested if it goes over two volts? Because that, that's the thing, is like, I had a motherboard where I was like, oh, the offset goes over two volts, and then it's like, no, it doesn't. And it wasn't some gigabyte for Yeah, that was a UD5, where it was like the offset just kind of stopped at some arbitrarily high voltage, which was, I think, 1.95 volts. Oh, it says you can go over 2 volts. Yeah, no, unless you've actually measured that the board goes over 2 volts, you do not know that it goes over 2 volts. That, that's the that's the really annoying thing with offset. Actually, uh, well, no, the Super I.O. will probably, uh, should actually measure that. Like, it's not going to be an accurate measurement, but you'll be able to tell if, like, the voltage is high enough or not from the Super I.O. But, yeah, that, that was the thing is, like, I thought, oh, like, it looks like it should go over two volts, and then I tested it, and it's like, uh, no, it doesn't. But if you're on dry ice, that's not a concern. No, that's really not a concern on dry ice. There's, like, no way it would scale that high on dry ice. At what voltage is it possible that the RAM is degrading for DDR5? Um, I don't know. I don't haven't heard of anybody managing to degrade any Hynix DDR5 yet, and some people have run very high voltages. I've run some very high voltages, and none of my sticks seem to be affected at all. So, like, at least the Hynix memory chips seem to not really care. Anyway, um, yeah, so I think I might want to revisit, uh, like, I want to, I think I want, might want to try to get some high scores with the CPU, just not right now. Um, maybe if I, maybe if I get liquid nitrogen, I'll run this, run this chip on liquid nitrogen. Um. No, I kind of want to do the GPUs first. Yeah, like, I've, I've done a lot of FX on LN... Well, not, like... In, in the grand scheme of, like, there's definitely people who have run way more LN2 on FX chips than I have. But, like, I've run a... Like, a lot of the LN2 I've ever purchased went into FX CPUs. So, you know what? I think I'll actually probably... Like, if I order liquid nitrogen, it's going to GPUs first. Um, not FX chips. <laughs> 8,000 APU OC. Uh, I should have one tomorrow. If I don't get it tomorrow, then I'll unfortunately probably won't have it until Monday, annoyingly enough. Well, anyway, um, that'll be it for the stream. So, thank you for watching. A uh, big thank you to, for the super chats, and uh, I guess... Well, I don't know when I'll stream tomorrow, because I don't, like, I don't know when I'll be awake. I don't know when the CPU will show up. But sometime tomorrow, maybe early, like, morning, like, you know, early morning of Saturday, probably 8600G stream. Um, so, yeah, also, Red5, uh... 
I, like, thanks again, but, like, this is... Concerning? <laughs> not, not used to people just, like, you know, donating, like, $300 in one stream. Especially in a stream that I would consider extremely mediocre, but thanks, I appreciate it. Um, so, anyway, that'll be it. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.